Morgan. Hey, Aspire. How's it going? I'm doing all right. So as you know, we started our new series, Aspire 25, and so we're super excited to have you with us today, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Sounds would, great. <laughs> so you wouldn't know it from the weather, but summer's supposed to be around the corner, so what do you have planned for this summer? So I'm not too sure yet. I'm hoping to get back to London, where I've been living this past year, and seeing if I can make that happen at some point this summer. Okay. So you mentioned living in London. So what's the best food you've had to eat there? Uh, the British aren't known too well for their food, <laughs> but I will say uh, the scones that I've had have been amazing. Having um, an afternoon cream tea with uh, two scones, Clyde cream and jam, along with your tea of choice has been my favorite thing to do. Clotted cream's definitely a good one. You can't get clotted cream in Morgantown, I don't think. I've been looking for it, but yeah, definitely not a Morgantown food. Uh, so what do you think the worst food is you've had while you were there? I haven't tried too many, so I need to get back to try more, but around Christmas time, mince pies are really popular, which are kind of like Fig Newtons, and I didn't love them. Mm -hmm. So for those viewers that watch the Great British Bake Off, they probably have seen those mince pies and they, they make them sound pretty good, but you're telling us they're not that good. Yeah, I've only had store-bought ones, so okay. maybe I should have gone... You need a Mary some. Berry one is what you're telling us. Mary Berry needs to make <laughs> you one. Uh, if you could only eat one thing every day for an entire week, what would it be? Ooh. Probably ice cream. I'd get really sick, <laughs> but it would be worth it. Ice cream, okay. Uh, so end of the debate for us, do you call it soda, pop, or soda pop? I call it soda. Okay, soda. You're a so you're in the soda camp. Uh, if you could pick anywhere in the world to live, where would it be? Well, I think West Virginia is the best place in the world, but outside of West Virginia, I'd probably say I'd go back to Spain and live in Madrid. Okay, so Spain, and we'll get we'll talk a little bit more about Spain. Uh, in a little bit, a, a question or a couple questions I have in the future. Uh, if you could live in any movie reality, what would it be? So any movie universe that you could live in, what would you pick? Hmm. I think I'd choose Harry Potter. Um, it was always my favorite books growing up, and I love the movies. I'd love to be a wizard. Uh, you'd love to be, a, yeah, okay, so you're definitely a wizard, and you're not going to be a muggle, is what you're telling me. Yes, Okay. Yes. Uh, so a lot of people recently celebrated May the 4th. Are you more of a Star Wars or Star Trek fan? I'm definitely more of a Star Wars person, but my mom's a Trekkie, so <laughs> she doesn't forgive me for that. Uh, focusing back on the UK, have you seen any members of the royal family? And if so, who have you seen? I haven't seen anyone yet. Um, sometimes going running, I'll run by Buckingham Palace, but um, so far I've not... I then went to So they, they always say the Royals, it's the at Buckingham Palace is the Royals' least favorite palace. And I'm like, oh, to have a least favorite palace would be awesome. But, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, can you pick your favorite Royal? Do you have a favorite Royal? Uh, definitely Meghan Markle. Okay. Uh, so what's the weather like in the UK? It isn't too bad. I know a lot of people say it's really rainy and dreary, and there's definitely days like that, but it, there's never really a downpour of rain. It's more like a drizzle, and we have had actually a lot of sunny days this past year. Okay. So, can you tell us what's easier to use, U.S. or U.K. currency? Definitely U.S. Um, I know we'll talk about it in a bit, but I got so used to the euro last year and then now having to adapt to um, the pound has been confusing. So I just use my, my debit card a lot. <laughs> so it's a, it takes away the, the conversion factor and the thinking, just use your debit card. Exactly. So you were involved in Model UN during undergrad. Could you tell the audience a little bit, bit about your takeaway from that involvement? Yes, Model UN was by far the best club I got involved in. Um, and I got involved in a lot of cool ones, but I loved it because it allowed me to explore international issues, make a lot of great friends, and also travel the world. So I felt like it was the interdisciplinary education um, through simulation that I really thrived on. So you weren't a typical Model UN student in that you weren't like a political science student. Uh, can, so can you tell us like what kind of drew you to Model UN? Like what made you want to do Model UN? 
Yeah, so I studied civil engineering and I was always interested in the environmental side, like water access, energy access. And I, after becoming really interested in politics, I realized that policy is the way that um, engineers can give people access to these resources around the world. And the UN is one of the organizations that seeks to do that. So I thought it was a great way to learn more about it. Great. So our viewers know that you um, were living in the UK. You're back in uh, West Virginia now. But could you tell them how you got to the UK? So what um, drew you there, essentially? Yeah, so I'm there with the Marshall Scholarship. I'm so fortunate to be one of the few that have won it. And I am studying for two masters. This first master is environmental systems engineering. And next year, I'll be doing a master's of public policy. And what really drew me into the program is that um, the option to study with more than one field, because since masters are typically one year, I get the chance to dive into two topics that I'm really interested in. Can you maybe tell the audience a little bit about the application process for Marshall? Yeah, so it's not easy, but it's absolutely worth it. Um, you have to fill out some essays, write personal statements, um, comment on your skills, leadership, academic, um, get some references from either professors or community um, advisors, and you submit it all in the early fall of your either senior year or year before you want to go. And um, I found that the ASIR office was incredibly helpful in guiding me through the process. So if a student did win the Marshall, what could they expect? So you touched on a little bit about the two masters. So can you just tell, like, if they won that, what could they expect to be getting into? So if you won the Marshall, you should expect to meet some of the most incredible people in the world. I've made some um, of my best friends through the Marshall, um, people from all different fields and backgrounds across the country. And um, I knew I was going into it for academic reasons to dive deeper into the fields of interest. And I've done that, but I feel I've taken more away from the relationships I've developed. Uh, maybe tell us the audience a little bit about the difference between the U.S. versus U.K. education. So there is definitely a little bit of a difference there. So if you could tell us about that, that'd be great. Yeah, so there's definitely a difference. And I don't know if I can say one is better or worse, just different. Mm -hmm. But um, the British system typically masters are one year. And so doing my environmental systems engineering masters in one year, here in the US, it would be at least two years. Okay, so you okay. also won a Fulbright to Spain. So you mentioned Spain a little bit, and so this is what we're getting back to Spain. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience there? Yes, so I was lucky to win a Fulbright scholarship to Spain. I was an English teacher in Madrid. And I love my time there. Spain is just a beautiful country full of culture and incredible places to visit. And I was lucky to work in a high school where I taught English and some other classes which are held in a bilingual fashion. But mostly I was the coach for their model UN team. So you had two big scholarships that you applied for and one while you were an undergrad. So what was that like? Was it super challenging to do two? or do you think it was something that was totally manageable? Um, it was definitely challenging. I had to budget my time, but it was very much worth it. So do you have any advice for students applying for scholarships through Aspire? Yes, I'd say to not only budget your time, but set your goals clearly. It can't hurt to apply, but really think about the reason why you're wanting to apply aside from winning something or going someplace cool. Think about how this will help you get to your next step and what skills you want to develop while you're on this journey. So what plans do you have once you finish graduate school? That's a great <laughs> question. I'm really been thinking about that a lot lately since I've been home this past month. And I am actually exploring some PhD programs currently. I never thought I'd be someone to want to go into a PhD, let alone be able to do that. But the Marshall Scholarship has taught me that um, that I am able and, and I'm eager to do so. Okay. So okay. over the last five years, what's your most memorable experience that you've had? Something over the last five years that was super memorable? 
Oof, that's also really difficult. Um, and while I've been lucky to travel really cool places all over Europe, I would say my favorite experience has been um, weekend day trips with my best friends in undergrad to Thomas, West Virginia, where we just go to Blackwater Falls, check out the cool art shops, and get some good food and coffee and hang out. Uh, one of the things uh, that we're going to be doing for all the Aspire interviews is ending them with the same question. And so the same question that I asked Vanna and then Maya in our video series, so you have a third video uh, interview that we're going to be doing. And so in five words or less, pass along the most important thing you can think of to current and future Mountaineers. So you only get five words. Ooh. Um... Sorry, I have to count them. Um, I'd say always pursue your dreams. Okay, always pursue your dreams. Words to live by from Morgan. And I think that concludes our 25 questions. So I definitely want to thank you from the Aspire office. And it was great talking to you. Thank you so much.